Right. You guys know what I look like already, so no need to see me all the time. I'm just gonna turn the camera. Right. You can see the beautiful blue skies, the white clouds. I'm walking back from Muay Thai class now. And it's crazy, this place has so many trucks. Like I lived in Beijing for like seven years and I never saw like a proper pickup truck here. Like every other vehicle is a pickup truck. It's cool, that's a Northern Thai style building. Uh, you see the wood. And usually, like if it's very traditional, it'll be stilted, like up off the ground. So those are just really nice to look at. So again, before I've always stayed in like Phuket, which is barely Thailand. Cause like the only people, the only Thai people there are just working there. Like there's never Thai tourists when I go, cause I go during high season. That looks like a giant bag of dried fruit or something. Uh, but Muay Thai was really good today. I learned how to grab a kick. Basically you hook it with your arm and then take a step to the side the kick is coming to lessen the impact. <sighs> then from there you can either attack or throw. That's what we learned today. I also learned how to like step under a kick or a hook and then attack. <sighs> ah, the weather is really perfect. The buildings here are really pretty. Yeah, I love this city. Awesome, bad news. Not really bad news, but just news about the movie. Uh, my character is done. Like, the schedule was always changing. I was supposed to only be here for like three days anyways, but then it turned into like a two-month thing, and apparently not a three-month thing, which is fine. I wasn't really too excited for going to Bangkok anyways. I'm kind of done with the big city life. But yeah, my character is officially out of the movie. Which means some good news. I always try to see good from bad or, you know, um, I can get my hair transplant earlier. So I'm talking to them and setting up a date. So then if I go to America in December for Christmas slash waiting for Corona to finish, uh, I'll look pretty good already. I'll just shave my head. Because when you transplant, they can transplant long hairs, but they never really want to. So I figure it's either like a lot more work or, or maybe it just doesn't really make sense. Because after you transplant a hair, um, like it, the root is basically the important thing. Because the healthy root from the back of your head, which will never fall out. So you transplant the hair. And then the shock from like the extraction and the insertion usually makes the hair fall out anyways. Like that's very, very common and it's normal. So that will always happen. And that's just uh, referred to as the shedding period. So you transplant your hair, you look like garbage for like the first three to four days because your head is like bright purple uh, from the bruising because they literally like pierce your scalp 3,000 times. So it's just a giant purple bruise. Um, then it's also very swollen, so you just look terrible. You shouldn't leave the house. Well, plus you shouldn't get UV or any kind of wind anyway, so you shouldn't leave the house. After a week, you look normal. The swelling goes down and the purple is gone. And after two weeks, you look pretty normal, just like fine. So your hair will be a little bit long by that point because like they shave it, they transplant it. It's two weeks long. And then the shedding occurs only on the new area. So your original hair line will still be there, but the new area, like if you feel in the front or whatever, will fall out. So it's kind of disheartening, but it's very standard. Here's some schools. You can see the kids up at their dorm, kids on the playground. Looks like people waiting for the bus. And there is a lot of people here, so I will put on my mask just to not be disrespectful. But again, masks don't do anything. You know how you can like uh, bend the metal on the mask like around your nose? I always put it under my nose and then bend it kind of like round around my mouth. 
So that's the way I prefer to wear a mask. <laughs> Here's the market up here. So again, this part will be open like pretty much all day. This is like the vegetable part, but like the fresh cooked food part will only be open during busy times. That's what I've come to learn. And yeah, I'm probably gonna be here until December, probably middle of December. So it's good to learn things about the city. Crossing the street right now. Here's a classic tuk-tuk, tuk-tuk. There's like a row of shops. It looks very similar to Egypt. That's probably why I like it so much. And there's a giant temple that does not look like Egypt. Definitely busy right now. It's like uh, 11 a.m. My Muay Thai class is two hours now. I always taxi there in the morning and then walk back. So like, I don't really mind walking after, but I don't like walking too. I smell fresh dill. I might go buy some baked potatoes. I don't have any cash with me right now because I don't really like to carry cash. Not a safety thing, just so I don't spend it. I'm really cheap. Flowers, not like romantic ones, but for giving Buddha. And everything inside too, so it's like really big. Here's a shop that sells like cups and takeaway things. This is that place that sells like the um, fried sweet potatoes and bananas. Looks like they're already out. That's the entrance of the shop. It might be a bus terminal as well. Like in a lot of, um, I'm just gonna say less developed because that's what they are. In a lot of less developed countries, they have like these micro buses, kind of an informal thing. And they just go to like different parts. It differs from a bus in that it's not like a scheduled thing. You just go there and then when there's enough people, it will leave. <sighs> that was really common in Egypt too. It's called a microbus. Bus. Microbus. Microbus. I'm gonna get in the shade. Some of the city, like watches and clocks, things for your house. City. Gold shop. The gold in Thailand is different. It's not like um, 24 or 12 or 18. It's always like 93%, which might not even technically be gold by some standards, but I'm sure it's good stuff. It's just a different measurement system. The buildings. So this is the point where I feel like pretty close to my hotel. This is that uh, busy market area. You can tell by the clock. And yeah, there's nothing out right now. Well, I mean nothing as far as like uh, fresh food. Here's something pretty cool, all the curry. All the different curries. And I'm wondering who I'm making this to. Maybe one day my kids will watch. Probably not though, because there's more interesting stuff on YouTube. Plus, YouTube might not even exist by then. See, I always like to think like of the future. Because like, there was a time where Blockbuster, it's, in case you don't know, Blockbuster is like a place where you would physically go there and pay money to rent movies. You'd have it for like a week, then you need to physically go there and return it. That just sounds archaic. I explained it to some of my students once and like they barely believe me. So I mean, that was like a huge company at one point. And then Netflix, which is the current huge company. Uh, you've got eBay, which used to be huge, which is now basically Amazon. So in Chinese, they say the only thing that is certain is change. Change is the only thing that is certain in life, which is definitely true. So like just some simple advice. Always save up some money because you never know when coronavirus is going to come and destroy the world and destroy careers and lives. And just always be able and ready to change. Like, never have 100% of anything in one place. Huh?
And the thing is, just don't worry too much. Like, all the worries I've ever had in my life didn't come true. Which I'm sure for some people, like, you know, it actually did. But I mean, how many people do you know that are just like destitute and homeless on the street? Probably not many. Oh, I love the weather here. It's hot, but not too hot. It's probably like 30, about 90 degrees. Another bus stop area. Government building, those cool ruins, the brick thing. There's always really, really good smells coming out of here. I think it's just a school cafeteria, which is kind of crazy. But yeah, it always smells really good. There's a cool bubble tea cut out. I love bubble tea, but it's one of those things I can't really have because I've never had one bubble tea. It always turns into three. I watched a movie yesterday, which is kind of famous, uh, Soylent Green. And it wasn't really that good. Like, obviously, the twist ending, which was kind of iconic of movies at that time. Like, Logan's Run or um, Planet of the Apes. But yeah, it was okay, but it was kind of too artistic for me. There were just, like, scenes of them, like, eating and enjoying the food and then crying. It's, like, really, really weird. Uh. And, like, I'm sure some people with different political beliefs see it as like an environmental film like oh we need to take care of the environment i see it as a big government is bad film but yeah what klong weang everything here is called like w-i-a-n-g weang which i assume is like chinese wong probably someone that was a businessman or leader back in the day i just missed the light i need to wait for it Whew. I am good on the right, not good on the left. Still good on the right. Oh, I could have went, eh, it really, really doesn't matter at all. Some uh, smart thing my dad taught me once about like, um, like passing someone, like when you're in the car and you pass someone, you basically end up together at the next stoplight. So even if you cross, pass someone and go an extra 10 miles per hour, over the course of like 10 minutes, that's only 100 meters. And then, boom, red light, then boom, you get to be the same place at the same time. And even like mathematically speaking, like, if you're only traveling like 10 miles, and you go an extra 5 or 10 miles per hour, it saves like 45 seconds, but then it burns more fuel. So it's like economically not very good. It's a cool motorbike shop, um, fixing shop. So what I'm trying to say is basically to slow down and chill, which is the best advice I can give myself. I'm always kind of hectic. The thing I love about Thailand is never wearing socks. open toed shoes for life it's peaceful uh, and I love my Muay Thai teacher so much I always say you never know who's gonna be your best man like at the wedding and mostly I always like meet someone and I like think they're so cool then eventually it just ends because that's how adult friendship works and I do like him a lot he's always like teaching me about Thai culture and stuff like he's just like so funny because you know how Asian people are very frank that's honestly where I get it from. It's not really a Western thing. So he's like, Thai people. I'm gonna do the accent, don't cry. Thai people, we lazy. It's like, in the North, we work little, get little money, it's okay. We don't care. In the East, they like to work and they want money. So he's always just like telling me like different parts of Thailand and stuff. Just the same as America, you know, people from the East Coast are like dicks. I've never met someone from East Coast that I like. One time in university, I was like working at the coffee shop and there was like a football game. And like, he wasn't like being like mean or rude or anything, but like we talked for a minute and I was like, oh, are you from the East Coast? He's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I know. I just didn't like him. 
you know, the south is a bit like chill and lazy. The north are kind of just like rednecks and bumpkins, like country people. You know, they know, they like the outdoors. And of course the west is, well, there's like the west desert and then the west California. I'm not, I've never really met anyone from the desert portion of America, but California is also just ridiculous. It's literally legal to knowingly give someone HIV. It used to be a felony. They made it like a misdemeanor because, oh, that stigmatizes people. It's like, no, if you give someone HIV knowingly, you should go to jail. And I guess give more people HIV. Right, I'm going to cross here. Whew. And at this point, I am back. So it's I started pretty much right after class. So it was a 16-minute lazy walk. I could probably get there in 12 minutes if I did it quickly. Run. Probably not much quicker. I don't really like running. Uh, Alright, let's finish here. See you guys.